clear. It's super clear now. <laughs> then I have all my face goo on it from being on the phone. <laughs> hey! So it's super chilly out here. It's June. I'm in my fleece jacket. Abby Labby is uh, checking out the scenery. Let's see if I can hold my phone there. Abby the Labby! Hey, don't eat that. Don't eat that grass. She likes a little salad sometimes, though. We're enjoying the view out at Mom's. Louie's here, too. Everything is rocking and rolling. And I did a video last week, and I, maybe even this week, who knows. I did another video sometime, and I was talking about how to get your spouse on board with real estate investing. So let's rewind a little bit and go over this topic again, because I think it's a really good one. So... When I started investing, it was 2012 when I bought my first property, and in 2013, I bought my first house. I got super serious about it at the end of 2013, and I told my boyfriend, hey, I'm going to be a successful real estate investor, and this is going to be awesome. I need you to get on board with me. And he is 10 years older than I am. So he has been through this experience before where people like go to these boot camps and these seminars and they get pitched all these programs and they invest their money and then nothing happens. And so he was thinking that I was going to go through that kind of situation. So when he told me that I had church camp mentality and nobody would work with me and I was wasting my time and effort and money and energy, all that, it came from a really good place. Okay. I tell this story a lot and people say, oh my gosh, why are you with somebody that would say such negative things to you? And frankly, he said it from a place of protecting me and he said it in a way that fired me up and got me to going and so it worked out fine and honestly sometimes we all say a few things that we don't actually mean in trying to protect somebody else's feelings sometimes y'all ever said anything that you didn't really mean to somebody you loved just because you were trying to not let them get hurt or you were trying to take care of them and it just kind of came out bad I mean, if he did as many videos as I do, there would be lots of stories where I've said some mean things to him too, all right? So he's fine, and we've learned a lot, and we've grown a lot in our communication strategy since then. But he did tell me that I was wasting my time, effort, and energy, and some of y'all are in those conversations right now where you're saying, I want to be a real estate investor. I want to buy houses. I want to flip houses. I want to get rental properties for passive income. And you're having these conversations and you have these big hopes and dreams and you're seeing me and I'm saying you can do this and you're trying to tell your spouse, you're trying to tell your partner, you're trying to tell your boyfriend or your wife or your mom or your dad or whoever your important person is. You're trying to say, hey, I'm going to do this. And they're saying, no, 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 no. And they're being, you know, a little bit of a Debbie Downer and raining on your parade. And it is annoying to hear those negative things because a lot of times you got that going on in your head. Like, can I do this? Am I smart enough? Am I strong enough? Am I, you know, can I talk to enough people? Like, you already have these doubts in your head. They're just saying it out loud where you can hear it, right? So... What are you going to do to actually get them on board? Well, there's probably a couple things that you could try to convince them to get their permission to allow you to go off into this, you know, la-la land of real estate investing and unicorns and rainbows. And I know you see everybody on Instagram and it's always beautiful and amazing and, you know, everything is a fixer-upper and everything is hgtv -able and all these things, I, I know that's what you're seeing. I see those things too, except I see it from real life sometimes. And I see it from crying in the kitchen floor sometimes. And I've been in the newbie shoes. I've been in the newbie shoes a lot. And I feel like I'm still in the newbie shoes quite often. In fact, today I felt like a total newbie. And I was so lost in a conversation with some seriously successful real estate investors. But I held on and it's all fine. So, you could ask for permission. You could ask for your spouse's blessing. You could ask them to go along on all these crazy ideas that you have. And real estate investing wasn't my very first crazy idea. So, 
at, t at the time, Jason was used to me coming up with ideas and trying something for a couple months and then going away from it. Or I would try this business idea for a while and then I'd go away from it. And so he'd seen me try and fail a couple times and he thought this was going to be another one of those try and fail kind of situations. And that's why he was, you know, poo-pooing on my parade a little bit. And he was being a negative Nancy. Sorry, Nancy. <laughs> but he was. And... The only way that I could prove to him that this is going to work and the only way that I think you're going to be able to prove it to your spouse that this is going to work and you are going to be a successful real estate investor. Some of you are not going to like this answer. Some of you are really going to ask me to do another video and come up with another cute way or, a you know, three steps to blah, blah, blah. I'm going to tell you all, though. In my experience, the only way to prove that this is going to work and the only way to get them on board is you're going to have to do it. Straight up, you are going to have to put the work in. You're going to have to put the calls in. You're going to have to put the money into marketing. You're going to have to put the money into getting an assistant. You're going to have to put your tail on the line. You're going to have to sign some contracts. You're going to have to take a lot of phone calls. You're going to be up late texting. You're going to be getting a new team on board. You're going to have to work. You're going to have to work. And you're going to have to get it done. You're going to have to get that shut up check. My first shut up check, I had a copy of it today. Uh, I've got it framed in the office, but I was moving some stuff around. My first shut up check was $13,160.50. But that's not all. I'd already collected rent for three months in advance by the time I got that uh, $13,000 check. So my first shut up check was for about $16,000.160.50. All right. One six one six oh five oh. All right, a little over sixteen grand in my first shut up check, but that wasn't enough to actually shut him up. I did six or seven deals. I made like seventy four, I think. No, 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 not at that time. Maybe like fifty six thousand dollars on six or seven deals, five or six deals. I did a handful of deals, and I I had cleared over fifty grand, but not quite a hundred yet before it ever really clicked in his head that I was serious about this. Before it ever really clicked in his head that sellers were gonna take me seriously and there was a lot of sellers out there that I could work with. I did lots of deals before he even went and saw any of my properties. I had one house that people were going ballistic over it. They wanted it so bad. It was their dream home. It was their castle on a hill. It was perfect. And it was a house that he wouldn't let Abby Labby walk into. And that's when he realized that I was going to have a ton of tenant buyers. I was going to have a ton of cash buyers. That's when he really realized that I may be onto something. But y'all, I was five, six, seven deals in. I was 50 grand into the profits before he really got on board. And even then, he wasn't super excited about houses. He's still not today excited about houses. So he got on board with real estate, but not houses. It wasn't until we really got into apartments and multifamilies and the bigger deals and more of the numbers and less of the emotion that he got super excited about it. Louie! Mama, come get your dog. Mom, come get your dog. He's run away. <laughs> so, if you're trying to get your spouse on board, that's awesome. Do it to it, baby. But the number one way that you are going to get him on board is you got to put your whole butt into this. I'd like to say you can put your whole heart into it, but I've seen some of y'all put your heart into something and it kind of just flitters away. You're going to have to put your whole butt into this. You're going to have to put all of your effort and your attention and everything that you ever wanted in life into this one goal. And you don't have to put it all in there forever and ever, amen. You could hustle it for two years and do one deal a month and end up with 24 houses. That'll show him. He'll be on board when he starts seeing $10,000, $15,000, $20,000 coming in every month. He will get on board. 
But I don't know which state is it. What state is the show me state? Is that Missouri or Arkansas or Kansas or some state out there is a show me state? I feel like the spouses are also kind of show me spouses. Show me it's going to work. Show me you're going to be able to do it. Show me you're going to stick to it. And this isn't going to be one of your ideas and it's gone in six months. Husbands are like that. Show me. Prove it. Y'all, the only way that I can show you is to introduce you to a program I have called First Deal Done Fast. But if you're not even ready for that, I've got a two-day event coming up next week that you're going to love. It's called FDDF Live. And I've been talking about the spouses and how you can get the spouses on board. One of the guest speakers, one of the four guest speakers for FDDF Live next week is my spouse. It's Jason. Jason's going to come on and teach a lesson next Wednesday during FDDF Live. And he's going to really cover what it's like. What, And he can't tell you exactly what your husband is thinking, but he can definitely tell you what he was thinking. I don't even know what he's thinking, okay? But he can tell you in a way that's going to help you be able to get your spouse on board. Because... Y'all are a team. You're in this together. You got kids together. You got your house together. You got memories together. You got plans together. You need to be a team here. So we're going to cover all of it next week at FDDF Live. It is a two-day event. It is virtual. It is on Zoom. We had a May event scheduled and only one person signed up, so we didn't do the May event. But if you signed up for the May event, then yes, you were coming to the June event. It's next Wednesday and Thursday. But if you didn't sign up or you weren't with me or you just weren't in the right mindset and now you're ready, y'all go to fddflive.com. fddflive.com. This is going to be a live two-day event on Zoom. We will send you the link so you can get signed in. We've got a Facebook group so you can hang out with us for the next 30 days. FDDF Live is a fantastic time for you to hang out with. I, I, I know we got four people that signed up last month and we've got six in FDDF Plus. The ladies in FDDF Plus can join FDDF Live. It's included. So we'll have at least 10, I'm thinking we'll have 20 or 25 women virtually next Wednesday and Thursday come together to talk about how they can get started and so they can learn the basics so they can start talking to sellers and I want you to be there. Go to fddflive.com and join us. It's next Wednesday and Thursday. While you're there, you're on the checkout page. We're going to be having a live in-person event at the end of August. So you can go ahead and get a ticket to that if you want to and come join us in Knoxville. And those will be limited seats because who knows how many people we'll be able to have together by then. But we can have as many as we want to next week on Zoom. And I would love for you to be there with us so you can, you know, find out more about how you can get started and you can show your spouse that you're serious about this. You're going to be a successful real estate investor. You've just got to know the foundation. Get that? It's a real estate joke. Yeah, have the foundation. <laughs> That's what we're going over at FDDF Live. If you're in First Deal Done Fast, you definitely need to be at FDDF Live because I cover stuff over those two days at FDDF Live that I don't really cover in First Deal Done Fast. And in First Deal Done Fast, we don't get to hang out together for two days straight. We're together, but it's more of a do-it-yourself kind of program. And it works. It's awesome. But there's something fun about hanging out together and going through this experience together and learning and talking to the other ladies in the chat. And it's a really good time. If you're not in First Deal Done Fast, you don't have to be to join FDDF Live. In fact, if you're not in First Deal Done Fast, this would be a great taste for you to figure out if you are going to be super interested in wholesaling and lease options and owner financing. This is a great chance for you to find out about, you know, the four categories of real estate. We're going to cover that at FDDF Live. We're going to be covering creative financing. We're going to be covering, you know, how to do deals without any money. We're going to be, um, I don't know, maybe we could do a honey hole exercise and I could help you find your honey hole, which is, you know, where we go to make the money, honey. 
Or maybe we'll help you develop your one-liner so that you can start talking to people and let them know that you are a successful real estate investor and that you buy houses here, there, and everywhere. I don't know. I haven't decided what the bonus session will be yet, but um, y'all can tell me down in the comments. What do you want to talk about? Jason will be talking about the spouse's perspective. Maria is going to be talking about negotiating like a lady because it's different to make soft offers versus written offers versus, you know, everything else. It's going to be a good time though. We're going to spend next Wednesday and Thursday together and I want you to be there. So go to fddflive.com. I want you to hear how you can get your spouse on board from my spouse. He does a great job of, you know, going back in time to when we were having all these conversations, all these hard conversations, and really, you know, kind of letting you see maybe what your spouse is thinking when you're talking about all this real estate. Because I've never been a man, and I don't know what they're thinking about. But from my perspective, how dare you tell me I can't do something? Let me go do this twice. That's good. And that's how you're going to prove it to them. But maybe you don't have to go that far to still get that, you know, fire under your skirt to go get these deals done. So I'm happy to help you. Go to fddflive.com. It's next Wednesday and Thursday. And if you are working next Wednesday and Thursday, it's all good, girls. We're going to record these. They're on Zoom. We're not going to edit them. But we will put them back up and we will have them to you probably by Monday. Um, it's just because it's a long day and it takes a while for Zoom to create the links and get the downloads and do all those things. So we'll get those videos to you. I would like to get them to you by Friday. It'll just be on what, so you can watch it over the weekend, but it's just dependent on Zoom. But it's going to be a good time. I am here for you. If you are trying to decide if you're ready to get started and you still aren't sure what to do, FTDF Live was made for you. So come hang out with 20, 25, 30 ladies online next Wednesday and Thursday so that you can get started. I want to help you get your first deal done fast. So come to FTDF Live, FTDFLive.com, and get started with us next Wednesday and Thursday. But, to summarize, the number one way to get your spouse on board, you got to get these deals done. You got to show them that you're going to do it. And then you're going to have to do it again and again and again. Okay? I'm here to help you. Mwah! Anybody have any questions or anything? Oh, hey. Hey, everybody. Hey, y'all. I see everybody on here now. Hey, hey. It wasn't, um, it wasn't telling me anybody was here. Yeah, you got to show them the shut up check. Yeah, Jennifer says she just goes ahead and buys them. Um, because if she waited on her hubby, the good ones are already bought and flipped before they'd actually get them under contract. Again, I agree. Hey, Anna, I love you too. Who else is here? Hey, y'all. Man, we had a ton of people here. All right. Well, I will see y'all at FTDF Live. Thank you, Stacy. It's good to see you. It's good to see your name pop up. Um, if y'all have any questions, send me a message or you can email info at WhitneyNastley.com. But just so we're clear, next Wednesday and Thursday, I'm going to be hanging out with you or your competition. So you better be there. Go to FTDFLive.com and I'll see you next week. Bye, y'all. Here, y'all want to see Abby the Labby? Hey, Sheila. Abby the Labby. Look how pretty that is. Perfect. All right. Y'all go to FDFLive.com.